Seven points to Marathon in the end. Was that a fair reflection of what happened out in the field today? Uh, not really to Morris. It should have been a lot more comprehensive in the way we went down from where we went um, Only for Cork, we really took the, the foot off the gas there with 10, 15 minutes to go. Um, it looked like we were in big trouble. What, what, what worried you about the performance failing? I think um, I think what really worried us was our, our naivety and I suppose our inability to, to counteract Cork's movement. You know, Cork, in fairness to them today, were really good. They've, they've really. Um, you know, came out with real intent and um, and asked a lot of questions of us, creating a lot of movement up front, a lot of overlaps. You know, a, a, a poke out strategy, I suppose, that took a lot of communication to break down and, and make sure that they weren't getting the the gains from. But we, we kind of failed to do that uh, consistently throughout the game, and, and it hurt us. But you know, I suppose the positives on the other side is we scored what 27 scores, um, and we didn't give up, which is the main thing, and uh, we learned a lot about. Uh, a number of players in different positions today as well as the one might work and, and that would definitely work more, more, more forward. So. What did you say to the players below in the dressing room, Liam? I just said that you know we, we the, the big thing from today is we have to have to learn, you know, the answers can't be from me now or the management team after today. Um, it has to be come from the players. The players have to really look at, at how they have to no it's it, it's by no means an arm bells tomorrow, so don't get me wrong, it's not. It's just a case of of um, you know, you play the match that's put in front of you and you know, we've been short today in a lot of areas and we need to just address it and, and correct it and I think it's it's good now that happens now in, in early May then it then it does uh, towards the, the end of June heading into the championship. I mean, the disappointed the last three goals you say that they went in in particular. It just got very ragged at the end there. Yeah, it, it very much had challenge match um, I suppose feel to it towards the end and um, that's always disappointing because it is it is a national hurling league and it, it you know it should be it should be um, all guns blazing throughout the match. Uh, but I think you know uh, it definitely fizzled out as it went along. And, and uh, as I said, our, our lapse of concentration again uh, towards the end hurt us big. And just when we looked like to be trying to get something out of the match, having it back to four points, we just handed the initiative back to Cork again. And, and you know, unfortunately, this this team has a tendency to do that, and it's something that we're still working on very hardly very hard to try and uh, counteract and try and eradicate, um, you know, so lots of work to do. Did you ever look at Callum Lyons' uh, red card? Uh, uh, I, I didn't see it yet, but I, I, I would say that, you know, there was, from where I was standing, there was a flick all right from behind and there was a bit of contact, but um, the rules of the rules is probably, I don't know, the rules of state, it's a red card, uh, but I would hope that would be just the, the minimum of, Whatever the warrant, whatever rate I warrant, warrants, I hope is the minimum, which would be a one match man. I, I, I couldn't see it being any more than just a rough play, in my opinion. The end of you really throw up any controversy there? Have there been on your mind the, the whole defending and giving away penalties and this kind of thing? Not really, to be honest. You know, um, um, not really, to be honest. Uh, like we're just, we're just trying to use the lead to, to see what it throws up and, uh, you know, Whatever comes at us, uh, we try, try and deal with it uh, after in, in training and try and improve in, in the upcoming matches. But um, no, today I thought, I thought there was nothing really came out of today that would cause us concern uh, with, with the rules. To be honest, the Sean Field, I thought it was good today. Jamie Barron wasn't there today. Uh, obviously, Kevin Warren wasn't there today. Do you expect relief back in the coming weeks? Yeah, there's a lot of players still, you know. Obviously, on our squad that are at different stages of their, of their, um, I suppose their fitness levels and how they've came back from from lockdown and things like that. So, um, you know, we'll be using the league just like every other team to to, to get these fellas adequate action to get them up to the pace for the, for the end of June championship. So, um, you know, there's nothing major. That's the point they weren't playing. It's just that they're not, you know, just not match ready yet. Um, in my opinion. So. We'll be looking to shake up the selection lean for next Sunday against Westmead. Uh, I think so, yeah, I think we will, and um, you know, if we want to be fair to everybody on our panel, we've talked to these seven fellas there that are working really hard at, at home and behind the scenes, and I want to be able to be able to give them, all them guys, as much opportunity as I can to put their hand up, and some got the opportunity today, and, and you know, more will get it, please God, as the league progresses. How encouraging was it to see Austin Gleeson carry on the form that he showed last winter, Liam, at the Orleans Series? I know, it's great, and Austin is... He's really training well and working hard, and um, you know he's he's really really good player. Everybody knows that, and I think he's shown the traits of a good player. Now, just 
rock and hard rock, do the ugly stuff as well, which, which maybe people would have heard of in the last days in the past that, that he's not um, you know, as hard working as he should be. But he puts himself about well today and he's, you know, still has plenty in him, lots more to come, hopefully, from, from uh, every aspect of, of Boston's uh, play, both phys- fitness wise and hard working. So, um, yeah, really happy with him, you know, happy with John Yuri Bailey as well at six, um, did well today. And, uh, you know, a few of the subs that came in as well showed a lot of energy when they come on. So, you know, a lot of positives from today as well. Liam, can I ask you just, I suppose, last season went so well for your side. Was today a bit of a land for them? Like, were they, were they surprised? Were you surprised they were beaten by so, com- so comfortably by Fox Side at GB twice last year? Um, not really, no. Um, we, we came down here to win the match. We, we spoke about and we set ourselves up to try and win the match. But, you know, this Cork side are a good side now. There's a lot of good young fellas in that Cork team that have come through you know, at, at my under 21, under 20 level that I've seen in the past. And, it, you know, the key to Cork here, people forget this, like um, Cork have a lot of blood and done at these players and people don't realise it. Right, OK, Cork might be at the heights that everyone expects them to be of being the traditional county they are, but they have a lot of young players blood at there that are still only 23 and 22 years of age that have three years of, or four years even of inter-county senior home under their belt. So, you know, they're going the right way and in fairness to them, you know, they can be a force to be reckoned with uh, both this year and, and into the coming years. Uh, I was just speaking to Stephen Crampton during the week as well and he was, I suppose, quite critical of the GA in terms of how they, how they dealt with the, the post-Christmas, you know, coming into the new season that we couldn't have gotten back earlier. Um, was that a frustration for you, I suppose, given the fact that you had built up so much momentum over Christmas and now coming in it's four or five months later and all that momentum is gone because you haven't had a chance to meet again? Uh, yeah, I think, I think it was the same for everybody. We just wanted a bit of clarity around when we could get back connected to training and, it's, and things like that. Um, but having said that, you know, it was what it was and, and uh, we had to just uh, prepare like everybody else behind the scenes and, and get ourselves right for when, when we did get back. And thankfully now we're back three weeks and it's, it's great and it's all part of, you know, we're getting all our houses in order for what's coming, please God, later on in, in, the, in the championship. I suppose, sorry, just finally for myself, um, you were speaking about, I suppose, it kind of resembled a challenge match at the end, and the fact that I suppose there isn't any final, there isn't kind of a competitive game, it does feel like in a kind of an, almost like an extended pre season. Does that kind of temper how you approach these games? Not, not how you approach these games, but do you think it, it tempers the league slightly, the fact that there isn't kind of a final at the end? And these games, there probably will be more games like this that will resemble more challenge matches, particularly if there's a, a gap between the teams going into the last 15 minutes. Yeah, look, I think that's unavoidable with the way the league is structured because of, of COVID and what have you. Um, it has a risk of taking on that kind of, I suppose, tendency or atmosphere. But I can assure you, as the league progresses and the teams get into the last two matches of the league in particular, you will see counties, including ourselves, put in real shape on our teams. You know, I'm more anxious to actually be really competitive in our last two matches than I am in, 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 in our first get two games. But that's not taken for today, Cork, but when. when worthy of their victory and look to be, you know, well ahead of where a lot of other teams are at the moment. So, yeah, we'd all go to that for that's coming later on. Is there, is there any hope that Porrick can play in any part of the season? Uh, we will have to wait and see. Porrick is just um, rehabbing, as, you know, hard behind the scenes and definitely, like, if, if Porrick Mahoney feels that, that he's ready to come back, um, you know, the door is always open. Um, we definitely be monitoring that and making sure that we're doing everything we can to try and get him back. But again, it's a serious injury that Warwick had, and, and the one thing you don't want to do is rush him. And say, like, Tag, obviously, it's even, you know, yeah, it's probably like, happening next I year. Yeah, I think things might come too soon for Tag this year with the yeah. way things are happening with the championship. So, but, like, Tag will be hopefully back, for, you know, for his club towards the end of the year. And 2022 will be his character to be ready again to, to man the central position for Warwick, hopefully. Up and down the country, people love their clubs. Just ask the big names. <laughs> Sorry, it's kind of hard to put that into words, ain't it? <laughs> okay, well, uh, you, you always give it your all for a club, no matter no matter who you're playing or, or what you're playing. You just always have to try and bust yourself. This is for the whole room, people, Nicky. Whatever grade you're playing at within the county, that you were able to have that opportunity to play. And the other night, I said. I'm going to watch it.
Well, hopefully you will too, as our game launches an online fundraising platform for clubs, helping you raise money for your team through a live interactive show on Zoom. There was a time when a club could sell hundreds of tickets and fill out a big venue, putting on an entertaining show like Dances with the Stars, White Collar Boxing, The Cube, and anything in between. Lots of money in the coffers to ensure your team could operate for the season and a good show put on for those supporting the cause. Right now, we're quite some time away from being able to put big crowds into a venue, yet the costs of running a club remain. So if your club is in need of a financial solution, perhaps we have it for you. We'll do it all for you too. We'll set up the ticketing platform. We'll send you a unique Zoom link for each person who has bought a ticket, all the issues taken out there, help organize a great panel of guests and put out a live interactive show for those at home to get involved. Simply contact us on events at ourgame.ie and we'll set your club up for a highly profitable evening's work. It's a simple recipe for your club to get much needed cash in the door with the extra option to sell raffle tickets if you have prizes to give away. So contact us now at events at ourgame.ie.